Okay, so before you took your quiz today, I just wanted to record a video um, to go over your warm up so that if you had um, any questions, hopefully this video will explain to you how to do it. Okay, so at the top part it says match the examples in column two with their correct name in column one. So we glance over at column two. We have two equations because an equation has an equal sign. So to the left, we have two equations in number two and number three. One of them being a literal equation. Remember, a literal equation has more than one variable. So the equation with more than one variable would be A. So A is the literal equation. And then the other equation, which just has the one variable X, would be under equation. The other two are expression and inequality. Well, inequality has the in equal, which means not equal. So the symbol that represents not equal well, it could be the non-equal symbol, but could also be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So since C contains the less than or equal to, that is the inequality. So to finish, D must be the expression, and yes, it is. It's just a binomial in this case with the two terms, so it has no equal sign. No equal sign is just an algebraic expression. Okay, number five. It says each step of the solution to the equation, four times three x plus four is equal to two times six x plus 10 is shown below. So here, all, here are the steps to the solution. Justify each step with either a property of equality or a property of real numbers. So we need to follow up with the name of each property. So here's the given, here's the original equation. To go from step number one to step number two is the distributive property. So four times three x, 12 x, four times four is 16, two times six x is 12 x, and two times eight is 16. So number one is the distributive property. Or the first line, it's not numbered. Okay, and then in the next line, we are subtracting the 12x, and that is the subtraction property of equality. And as I mentioned, I'm okay with the of equals. And then we end up with the 12x is canceling out, and 16 equals 16. When it comes out to be a statement that is equal, so you have the same either expression on each side, such as right here, 12x plus 16 equals 12x plus 16, when you have the same expression, or if you get rid of the variable and you have the same numbers, when they're the same, that means you have an infinite number of solutions. If they weren't equal, that would be no solution. So let's take a look at six. Given the equation, negative of 3x plus 4 equals negative 3 times 3x plus 2 plus 6. This should be an x. That's a typo. Fill in the missing step or reason in its solution and justify each step with a property of equality or property of real numbers. So from the first line to the second line, the step is missing. But it says you use the distributive property. So let's distribute. So negative times 3x is negative 3x. Negative of a positive 4 is negative 4. 3 times 3x, 9x. 3 times 2 is a positive 6. And then bring down the 6x. And moving from that second line to the third line, well, this whole left side matches. OK, it's negative 3x minus 4. The right side, what's different is that these two terms 
are switched. But then I look down below and this has a negative 6, so I must have made an error. So if we look above, negative 3 times a positive 2, this should be not a plus 6, but a minus 6. Now that looks better. So that helped me to catch my mistake. So in changing the order of the negative 6 and the 6x, they were swapped so that these two like terms were right next to each other. The property that allows you to change the order and still get the same answer for addition is the commutative property. To combine like terms, which it says to do in this step here, we just bring down the negative 3x minus 4, and then a negative 9x plus 6x is a negative 3x. Bring down the negative 6, and you can see this does match that. Good. And moving to the next step, they took this equation and they added 3x to both sides because the opposite of a negative 3x is a positive 3x. And the property that was used would be the addition property of equality. I'm going to pick up my pen. There. Now, in this case, as negative 4 equals negative 6. And the answer is no solution because they are not equal. When these two numbers, once you've canceled out the variables, and this statement gives you an equation with two unequal numbers, it means it's no solution. On the back. So on the back, we're going to solve these equations algebraically, and then I will show you how to check again. So let's take a moment and distribute the 0.2 through the parentheses. So if we bring up the calculator, 0 0.2 times 3 is 0.6. So 0.6x minus, and then 0 0.2 times a negative 5 is a negative 1 equals. Let's distribute the 0.15 through the parentheses. So 0 0.15 times 2 and 0 0.15 times 3. So it becomes a 0.3x plus 0.45. We'll do 0 0.3x plus 0 0.45. Yep. Bring down the negative 0 0.85. We can combine some like terms on the right side. So we have 0 0.6x minus 1 equals 0 0.3x. Now the 0.45 minus 0.85 is a negative 0.4. So I'm going to do 0 0.4. Now I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to subtract the smaller number of x's from the larger. And I end up with negative 0.3x minus 1 equals, those are canceled, negative 0.4. So when we add the 1, we have negative 0.3x equals so there's the negative 0.4 in there. I'm going to hit plus 1. And we have 0.6. Divide by negative 0.3. Divide by negative 0.3. And we get a final answer of a positive 2. Or I'm sorry negative or positive is a negative 2. And let's go over again how to check our answer. So to check, we would do negative 2 store for x. 
We type in the left side equation separately than the right side. So the left side is 0 0.2 left parenthesis 3x minus 5 equals. And then the right parenthesis is 0 0.15 left parenthesis 2x plus 3 right parenthesis minus 0 0.85. Are we correct? No. So there is a mistake somewhere. Hmm. Where is our mistake? So scanning through line by line, this line looks good with the distribution. Combining like terms, that looks good. Aha, right here. Um, this difference should be positive. So if I divide by the positive, positive over positive is positive. So if we check and we store, so 2 store for x, typing in the left side, 0 0.2, left parenthesis, 3x minus 5, 0.2, and then typing in the right side, 0 0.15, left parenthesis 2x plus 3 minus 0 0.85, we get 0 0.2. Much better. So I was able to spot my mistake. Some of you get very frustrated on your assessments when you're checking you're not getting the right answer. But make sure, okay, you can either do it separately, just make sure you go really slow and check line by line. So x is 2. All right, a fraction equation. With uh, a fractional equation, we want the denominators to all be the same. Since this one's a 5 and that's a 3, and when you do multiply 5 times 3, you do get 15. 15 is the number we want all of den the denominators to be. So once you multiply the bottom by a number, you must multiply the top as well. So 3 times 2x would be 6x over 3 times 5, 15. Then we're going to add to that, so 3 times 5, so 1 times 5, that would be 5 over 15 equals, since this already has a 15, you can think about it as multiplying by 1, but you don't need to change it. So it's 7x minus 2 over 15. Now you cross out the bottom and solve the top. So 6x plus 5 equals 7x minus 2. I'm going to subtract 6x first so that we have a smaller number of x's subtracted from a larger to give us a positive number of x's. Now add the 2 to the addition property of equality and x is 7. So let's check that. Hopefully this one checks. But it is also 5.30 and Mrs. Simons has had a long day today. So x equals 7. So 7 store for x. So if I type in the first fraction, which is 2x divided by 5, that number is 2.8. So I'm going to write above it, this when I plug it in is 2.8. The next fraction uh, is 1 third, so we can leave that as 1 third. There was no x. Does that give us 7x, so 7x minus 2. I'm going to close the parenthesis there um, because I want it's a binomial so I wanted to do that first then divide and then we're going to choose um, divide by 15. Enter. Which is 3.133 repeating. So let's actually add those on the calculator. Let's see if we get 3.1 three, 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 repeating. So plus, anytime you're putting in a fraction, put parentheses, and we're good. Yay! It's been a long enough day. I don't want to go through that again <laughs> or try to find my mistake. All right, let's finish with eight, nine, and ten, and then you will take your quiz. So in number eight, it says, x, is x equal to negative three the solution to the equation x plus 28 equals 13 times x minus 8. You could store this in your calculator and check, but you have to justify, which means to show the work. 
so we're actually going to plug it in. So does negative 3 plus 28 equal 13 times negative 3 minus 8? Negative 3 plus 28, if you don't know how to do the calculation, go to your calculator, is 25. On the right side, order of op, you need to do multiplication before you subtract. So negative 3 times 13 is a negative 39. And negative 39 minus 8, so now minus 8, is a negative 47. So they're not equal. So is it the solution? You need to answer it and say no. If it was a solution, it would check or come out to be equal. The last two are literal equations, and in the first one, we have to solve for x. So we want to isolate x. Well, I notice there is x on both sides as well as the b terms. I'm going to add the 3b over to its like term, 7b. So now I have b times x equals a times x plus, because these are like terms, we can actually add the 3 to the 7 to get 10b. I want all of the x's on the same side of the equation, so I'm going to subtract ax. Because you cannot take away an a from a b, we just write it horizontally rather than vertically. So bx minus ax equals 10 B. If you notice, we have x, a part of both terms, and that must have been distributed through in order for that to happen. So I'm going to undo that distributive property and pull it out. And when I pull out the x from this term, I'm left with b, bring down your symbol, and then you pull it out from ax, you're left with a. X is connected to that difference of B and A by a product or multiplication. So we have to divide by B minus A. And our answer, X equals 10B over B minus A. So we have a B and an A in our answer, which is why the question said in terms of A and B. And then the last one, Solve for x1, given that a equals p times the sum of x1 and x2 over 3. So if I want to solve for x1, and because it's in parentheses, I'm going to undo the product first by multiplying by 3. So I end up with 3a equals p times x1 plus x2. Because it's in parentheses, and then we're going to do the opposite of multiplying the sum of x1 and x2 by p by dividing. So it ends up being 3a over p equals x1 plus x2. Now it's outside of that parentheses. So to finish, we just have to do the opposite of adding x2 to get x1 by itself, which would be to subtract x2. And to finish, we're just going to write this horizontally. So the answer is going to be the fraction, which is 3a over p, minus x2, which is equal to x1. So take your time today. Do not rush with the quiz. Um, or actually, no, today's not the quiz. Tomorrow's the quiz. Mrs. Simons needs to go home. Okay? I keep making some mistakes. Friday is your quiz, quiz number two. Okay? Today you're just going to do some practice and review for the quiz tomorrow. Okay? So my apologies. It is now quarter to six. I am signing off. We'll see you tomorrow.